Hey guys, this is uh, the Flight of Faith, uh, quarantine edition, coming to you from the South Bronx, uh, here at St. Crispin Friary, where I live. Uh, this is our nice little second floor, uh, little uh, veranda that we have. You can see behind me that our beautiful tree is starting to bloom, um, which to me communicates kind of the, the interestingness of this time, is that uh, we've got all the challenges of being quarantined and learning from home and um, sorrowfully uh, people getting sick and some people even uh, dying from this, this virus. And yet it's spring <laughs> and things are blooming and there's all these signs of new life, uh, of flowers uh, showing us their beauty, of the sun uh, shining, the temperatures rising. Um, so this, this, this strange mix of both death and dying and life and rising um, that's coming to us during this time. So I just had a few thoughts for you from this Sunday's Gospel, which you may have already heard. Um, so this is from the Gospel of St. John, and this is just the first part of it. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I just was so struck by the, the power of this gospel, um, especially during this time. The question that they asked Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, might be a question that we find is on our hearts at this time. You know, whose fault is this coronavirus? Whose fault is it that this is happening? Is someone to blame? God, why is this happening? the same thing that was being asked about this blind man. Why is this man blind? What happened? What was the cause of it? And Jesus sidesteps that. He doesn't in some ways answer that question. In fact, he goes beyond it. He doesn't sidestep. He goes beyond it and he says, this happened so that the glory of God can be seen through this man's life. And I would say that's really the truth for us as well. It's the deeper truth of what's happening. Sure, there. There might be um, scientific answers, which are all valid for why this is happening. But why did God allow this to happen? Why does he permit evil to take place? Why does he permit the evil of somebody being born blind or with other diseases happen? Why do viruses spread? Jesus' answer to us today is that it's so that the glory of God can be seen. And it goes on to say, we have to do the works of the one who sent me. We, Jesus includes us in his work. He says, the father sent me and you are my brothers and sisters and you have to do the very things that I do. Bring forgiveness, mercy, healing, peace. Be kind to each other. Be forgiving, merciful. We have to do the works of the one who sent him, the Father. What is the Father asking of us to do? How are we during these days being called to be brothers and sisters to each other? Perhaps brothers and sisters to our brothers and sisters in our house, to our parents, um, to our grandparents. How are we being called to love them and being challenged to be patient? Uh, I can tell you, I'm struggling with that myself. I'm failing in that myself. And yet Jesus talks about God being glorified through that kind of thing. And then it says, 
he says it, he spat on the ground and made this mixture with the clay. Well, we know from the book of Genesis that this is not the first time God played in the clay. No, Genesis uses that language to talk about when God made us, that he made us with his own hands, that in that symbolic language of that myth, you know, that ancient myth of, of Genesis, which speaks to us real truth, real truth about who we are, that we have the very fingerprints of God on us, that, that we're made in his image and likeness, that there's stuff about us that can only be explained by our creator, that we have a creator who made us to be like him, to receive him, to do the things that he does, that we're made in that way. And in Genesis, it says that he breathed into us, that it, he breathed life into us. It, it's so visceral, it's so close, this sharing. That's that truth that Genesis speaks to us. But here, Jesus makes this mixture of saliva and clay and smears it on his eyes. It's like, whoa, that's a little bit close, Jesus, to be smearing clay on somebody's eyes made out of your spit. But have you ever worked with clay before? When it dries out, you have to make it wet in order to make it malleable again. And so just as God breathed life into the clay at the beginning to make us, here we have Jesus wetting the clay with his own saliva. Yes, it's visceral, it's a bit too close, it's very sacramental. It communicates us to us the life of God. It's this strange baptism that this man undergoes by which he's healed, by which his, his sight is restored. It says that he was, he was told to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which John translates here and says it means scent. To be sent is to be an apostle. In the Gospel of Mark, it says, Jesus called those whom he desired, whom he desired, so they could be with him and they could be sent out. And he created them apostles. And it names the 12 apostles. Today, during this time of the virus, during this time of this time of quarantine, you and I are being sent, not far and abroad to the four corners of the world like the 12 apostles were, but to our families, to be viscerally close, but to do the works that the Father sent Jesus to do, to be merciful, kind, forgiving, to serve one another and not seek to be served, to communicate God's own life through very close stuff. And in the process of doing so, we're being apostles. And if we carry that out according to God's grace, we will be healed as well. There will be a healing that comes to us in our lives by us relying on the grace of God, by asking forgiveness when we need to, and by serving one another generously. I pray that this Sunday uh, both communicates to you uh, the beauty of life, the fact that God is with you in your struggle, and the reality that life goes on and life presents us with opportunities to serve and love one another. Allow God to heal you through the ways that he sends you to serve others. God bless you.